Hello everyone and welcome to my Measure Summit talk titled The Five Measurement Myths of Google Analytics 4. So before we dive into today's topic, I wanted to briefly cover the evolution of Google Analytics to help set the scene. So let's cast our minds back to 2005 when Google acquired Urchin Analytics to offer a free to use analytics platform. We then fast forward to 2007 when Classic Analytics was launched. It was firstly launched with synchronous tracking code and then updated to include asynchronous tracking code. Classic Analytics then stayed with us for about five years up to 2012, when the next iteration, Universal Analytics was launched. Universal Analytics came with brand new tracking code and improved user interface um, as well. And Universal Analytics then became a mainstay for the next eight to 10 years with improvements along the way, such as the ability to track user IDs and to also track apps um, as well. Then in 2020, Google Analytics 4 was soft launched. And then over the last three years, we've all been moving over to Google Analytics 4 as our operating standard. When we consider this timeline, I'd argue that the biggest development has been most recently moving from Universal Analytics across to Google Analytics 4. It's been a big thing due to four key reasons. Firstly, we have a new event-based data model, which changes the way we think about and solution measurement as well. Secondly, tagging. Google Analytics 4 has required a complete retagging of websites, which means it's been a big job to move over for any client, big or small. Thirdly, data structure. Universal Analytics and preceding versions had accounts, properties, and views as the data structure. With Google Analytics 4, we now just have accounts and properties. So it's just another thing for us to get our head around as part of that migration as well. And then finally, reporting. Google Analytics 4 has a brand new reporting inf uh, interface with less pre-built reports and an increased emphasis on creating custom reports via tools such as Explorations or the BigQuery raw data export, both of which I'll talk about later on in the talk today. So big changes, I'm sure you would agree, which has meant a lot of confusion and common questions like this being asked. Is Google Analytics tracking with high accuracy and precision? Why am I seeing differences in data when I compare Universal Analytics and Google Analytics 4? And why am I getting conflicting data and multiple sources of truth? So for example, running some data in the Google Analytics 4 interface and running what's seemingly the same data using the BigQuery raw data export, but getting two very different results out the other end. So the purpose of my talk today is to lift the hood under Google Analytics 4 to debunk some myths and to provide some clarity as well. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's begin with our first myth. It is a myth that the Google Analytics 4 interface reports with both high accuracy and high precision. But what do I mean when I talk about accuracy and precision? This can best be visualized like this. So accuracy is about how close you are to the center or intended target. The closer you are, the more accurate you are. Precision can be thought about as how close together your data points are. So on the right hand side, we can see we've got a highly precise data set because our points are close together, but the accuracy is low because it's far away from our intended target. And essentially when we look at accuracy and precision together, it gives us four different scenarios. So our ideal scenario is high accuracy and high precision where we're guaranteed that every data point hits our intended target. An acceptable trade-off might be high accuracy and low precision, whereby the majority of our data points hit the intended target, but there may be the small number of data points that don't quite hit the intended target. We then have low accuracy and high precision, whereby all of our data points are close together, but they're far away from our intended target. And then finally, low accuracy and low precision, which is typically scattergun, there's no pattern or trend as to where the data sources or data points will land. So accuracy and precision isn't an issue when we are dealing with small or simple data sets. For example, we've got a data set in the middle of the screen here. And if I asked you to tell me the number of unique colors in this data set, you would easily tell me the answer is three. The number three here represents the cardinality and it's simple to calculate because the sample size is small. But what if I was to ask you the same question for this slightly larger data set? Here, we've got a sample size of 50. I'm sure you'd agree the answer isn't so easy. Why is that? Well, it takes time, memory, and an algorithm or approach to unjumble and get the answer, 
which is 10. So whether you're a human or a computer, it's going to take more time and more memory to get to the result. How about we take this on an even larger scale? For example, let's take the users metric in Google Analytics 4, where the data set is large, the cardinality is high, into potentially the hundreds of thousands or even the millions. I'm sure you'd agree it would take huge amounts of memory and processing to get an answer that is both highly accurate and highly precise. Therefore, to ensure both accuracy and speed of processing, we need to accept lower precision and estimate cardinality. And this is exactly what the Google Analytics 4 interface does. Cardinality in the Google Analytics 4 interface is estimated using an algorithm called hyperloglog++. This provides an estimate typically within 2% accuracy in a faster time and using less memory. The hyperloglog++ algorithm is hard coded into Google Analytics 4. There's no way of disabling it. There's no way of switching it off. So how does hyperloglog work? I'll attempt to explain this using a simplified example. Here we've got a data set at the top of the screen. Now, I know you'll be able to tell me that the cardinality here is five because we've got five unique colors, but let's pretend we didn't know that and use hyperloglog to get an estimate of what it would be. The hyperloglog works broadly in three steps as follows. Step one, each unique color is converted to a binary code. So for simplicity here, I've taken four bits or digits as the binary code. And what we do, first of all, is we take the left two most digits, which I've highlighted in orange, and these create our data buckets. So you can see we've got bucket zero, bucket one, bucket two, and bucket three. Then for each bucket, we take the rightmost two digits to form the content of the bucket. So let's take our first color, 1001, as an example. We can see the bucket is 10, which is bucket two, and then we've put the contents 01 into the bucket. What we're looking for here is strings of successive zeros as part of the algorithm. So once we split our data into buckets, the third and final step is to apply the hyperloglog calculation. The calculation has three different elements to it. Firstly, the number of buckets, which in our example is four. Secondly, we calculate the harmonic mean. And thirdly, we apply what's called the flagello constant, which is the 0.79 402 that you see. This is named after Philip Flagello, who helped to develop the algorithm and through extensive modeling found that this particular constant gave the most accurate results. So when we plug each of those in, we see that our estimate is 5.08, which is very close to what it actually is, five, within a very small error rate, in this case of less than 2%. So talked about hyperlog log and you know the how that's used within the interface, but thanks to the democratization of Google Analytics 4 and the Google BigQuery raw data export, we do have the ability to get user data of both high accuracy and high precision if required. We can do this by running a distinct count of the user pseudo ID within the BigQuery raw data export, and that will measure the user's metric exactly. But be aware that this is gonna consume a lot of memory and it's gonna take a lot of time to run. Within the BigQuery raw data export, you do have the option to consider a prox count on the user pseudo ID or HLL count on the user pseudo ID, which will give you that uh, count of high accuracy, but low precision as well. So it's a nice flexible solution where you could have either or as well. So let's put all of this together to debunk our first myth. It is a myth that the Google Analytics 4 interface reports to a high degree of accuracy and precision. Instead, it uses an algorithm called hyperloglog++ to estimate cardinality to a high degree of accuracy. So let's move on to our second myth. It is a myth that the user's metric is comparable across Google Analytics 4 and Universal Analytics. There are three reasons why this isn't the case, which I will now explain in more detail. Firstly, and importantly, is that all pre-built reports in Google Analytics 4 are based on active users and not total users. An active user is defined as a user that's either an engaged session or is a new user to the website. Now, Universal Analytics and preceding versions, the pre-built reports were always based on total users. Active users is a new metric specific to Google Analytics 4. 
Therefore, user counts in Google Analytics 4 pre-built reports may look lower than their corresponding report in Universal Analytics as Universal Analytics pre-built reports reported on total users and Google Analytics 4 pre-built reports report on active users. So total users are available. Google Analytics 4 is a flexible solution. It's just a case of knowing where to find this metric, and it can be found in two different places. Firstly, total users is available in the expirations module as a separate me metric to active users. So you can see on the left-hand side here an expiration where you've got total users and active users available to select. Within the BigQuery raw data export, then a count, a distinct count of the user pseudo IDs will give a calculation that represents total users. So comparing total users in Google Analytics 4 against total users in Universal Analytics is a more meaningful comparison. And this can be nicely visualized using the table below. So we can see in Universal Analytics, there was no such thing as active users. We only had total users in the pre-built report. The pre-built reports in Google Analytics 4 is the other way around. We have active, but not total. But we can see the expirations and the big query export give us the flexibility to do both. So it's just making sure that whatever comparison we're making, we're comparing like for like along the way. The second factor to consider is reporting identity. Reporting identity is a new feature in Google Analytics 4 that affects how users are calculated within the interface. There are three different calculation methods which I will cover now. Firstly, blended. Blended is the most expansive, taking into account the device ID, user ID if it's configured, Google Signals if it's configured, and also any modeling through initiatives such Google, like Google Consent Mode. Observed works similar to blended, but it excludes any model data. So it only looks at device ID, user ID if it's configured, and Google Signals if it's configured. And then finally, device ID is the least expansive. It only looks at device ID only, excludes everything else, and is most similar to how Universal Analytics calculated users. Now, Google Analytics 4 defaults to the blended reporting identity, meaning initial comparison versus Universal Analytics is not on a like-for-like -like basis due to those differences in methodology. Now, reporting identity is flexible in that you can switch across the three different options within the admin settings without permanently changing the underlying data. And any changes that you apply, apply to both historical and future data as well. So I'd implore you to try switching the reporting identity within your Google Analytics 4 setup and analyze the difference in the user's metric across each method to understand the impact and importance of this setting. The final factor to consider here is data thresholding, and this is closely linked to reporting identity. Data thresholding is a privacy safe measure that is new to Google Analytics 4. Where data could infer the identity of an individual user, this is excluded entirely, meaning that reports subject to thresholding only run on a subset of user data, which affects the accuracy. Data thresholding is highly prevalent where Google Signals data is enabled, and the likelihood, therefore, of user identification increases. What's important to note is data thresholding is hard-coded. It cannot be switched off or disabled within Google Analytics 4. If your Google Analytics 4 setup is impacted by data thresholding, then reporting identity selection can help reduce the impact of data thresholding. And this decision tree could be a useful resource to help you navigate that journey. For example, switching to a device-based reporting identity where you see thresholding with Google Signals activated allows the best of all worlds. It allows Google Signals to continue to be used for remarketing purposes whilst ensuring the highest accuracy within your Universal Analytics data set as well. So it is a myth that the user's metric can be compared fairly across Google Analytics 4 and Universal Analytics. Firstly, Google Analytics 4 pre-built reports report on active users and not total users. Total users are available within the Explorations module or can be calculated using a distinct count of the user pseudo ID in the BigQuery raw data export. Also, new features such as reporting identity and data thresholding can have a significant impact in how users are calculated in the Google Analytics 4 interface. So it is important to consider your Google Analytics 4 setup carefully 
in regards to both of these features. So let's move on to our third myth. It is a myth that the sessions metric is comparable across Google Analytics 4 and user Universal Analytics. And this is due again to three reasons, which I will cover now. Firstly, sessions has always been a bit of a problematic metric. It has been very easy to unintentionally compromise accuracy, either through poor tagging practices or technological developments which require bespoke solutions. For example, incorrectly using UTMs on internal site links and the well-known rogue referral problem on single page apps can both destroy attribution and significantly inflate session data. Google have recognized these limitations and in Google Analytics 4, where a source, medium or campaign changes mid-session, a new session now does not begin. This is an important step because it helps to preserve attribution back to the initial marketing source whilst avoiding inflated session counts. So should your universal analytics configuration have been highly susceptible to session inflation issues, you are likely to see that when you compare this data against Google Analytics 4, your Google Analytics 4 data is lower. But at the same time, it's going to be more accurate for the reasons I've just mentioned above. So secondly, the session counting logic has been updated for sessions that cross from one day to the next. So let's take this example where a user lands at five to midnight on the site and then they leave the site at five minutes past midnight and we've crossed the day. In Universal Analytics, where a session crosses two days, Universal Analytics would automatically start a brand new session at midnight, which essentially inflates the session count. So that journey would be represented in Universal Analytics as two sessions. In Google Analytics 4, this very same journey is now represented as a single session count and could create a potential discrepancy when you're comparing Universal Analytics output against Google Analytics 4 output. And then finally, the rules around late hit processing have changed. So what do I mean by late hit processing? So let's say a user visits your site on a mobile device. And then whilst visiting, user loses the mobile signal, effectively ending the visit. But then the user revisits the site when their mobile signal returns. Now the gap between the second and third points here is really, really important. Within Universal Analytics, the processing window was four hours, which means the difference between losing the signal and returning of signal, if that happened within four hours or less, Universal Analytics would process that as a late hit. With Google Analytics 4, that time is now extended out to 72 hours, which means we have a greater likelihood of recapturing more lost sessions in our data than we would have seen in Universal Analytics. And this could potentially impact on the differences of session data between Universal Analytics and Google Analytics 4 as well. So it is a myth that session counts are comparable across Universal Analytics and Google Analytics 4. Improvements have been made to reduce the likelihood of session inflation and extending the time period of late hit processing will help capture lost sessions too, meaning any comparison between Universal Analytics and Google Analytics 4, the session data is not on a like for like basis. So let's move on to our fourth myth. It is a myth that conversion metrics are comparable across Google Analytics 4 and Universal Analytics. Again, there are three reasons why the conversion metrics are not comparable across Google Analytics 4 and Universal Analytics, which I'll explain in more detail now. Firstly, it's around the conversion counting method. So let's take the example where we have a user session to the site. That session generates three of the same conversion. In Universal Analytics, session counting was used in goals. Therefore, this journey would be recorded as one conversion count and not three. So essentially, there'd be a deduplication going on here. In Google Analytics 4, it largely defaults to event-based counting. So that exact same scenario in Google Analytics 4 would be recorded as three conversions and not one like in Universal Analytics, therefore creating a potential discrepancy and the likelihood of seeing higher conversion data in Google Analytics 4 when compared to Universal Analytics. Now, Google Analytics 4 is a flexible solution and Google Analytics 4 offers both session 
and event counting methods for conversions. So changes can be made in the Google Analytics 4 admin portal to switch a conversion to session counting, which could be used if you wanted to provide a more meaningful comparison with your universal analytics counting logic. Secondly, there are certain conversion types that no longer exist in Google Analytics 4. For example, SMART goals in Universal Analytics are no longer supported in Google Analytics 4, but have been indirectly replaced with the ability to create predictive audiences. And finally, and importantly, the change of attribution model in Google Analytics 4 will impact on how conversion data is reported at a source, a medium, and a campaign level. Linked closely to attribution modeling is scoping. So let's take this simplified journey here to explain how this works. Let's take a journey where a user comes in via Google organic search, visits but doesn't purchase at that time. They come back later via a Google paid search ad and then purchase on that particular session. So if we use the first user scoped source medium dimension in Google Analytics 4, the purchase will be attributed to the first touch point. So in this case, Google organic. If we were to use the session scoped source medium dimension, the purchase is attributed to the source or medium that generated the conversion. In this case, Google CPC. If we were to use the event scoped source medium dimension, then attribution is based on the reporting attribution model specified in the GA4 admin settings. By default, this is set up to the data driven attribution model. Therefore, we would expect to see all touch points, i.e. organic and paid search, getting some form of the credit for the conversion. So it is a myth that conversion metrics are comparable across Universal Analytics and Google Analytics 4. With a change in counting method, the deprecation of some conversion types, and a fundamental change in attribution model and scoping means that any comparison across the Universal Analytics and Google Analytics 4 data sets for conversions is not on a like-for-like -like basis. So now let's move on to our fifth and final myth. Query, it is a myth that querying the same data in the Google Analytics 4 interface and Google BigQuery raw data export will return the same results. There are four key reasons for this, which I will explain in more detail now. The first reason we covered right back at the start of our talk, whereby the Universal Analytics and Google Analytics 4 interfaces use hyperlog log to estimate cardinality. Exact counts can be derived using the BigQuery raw data export, but will be at the expense of memory consumption and time taken to process. And that's using the distinct count of the user's pseudo ID. Doing that and comparing it against the interface is gonna give you different results because we are comparing exact versus estimated. And this is summarized nicely within the table. We can see that whether we're using Universal Analytics or the GA4 interface, that is estimated data, but you can get exact and estimated from the BigQuery raw data export. Secondly, it's about being aware of how active users and total users are used in Google Analytics 4. And again, the table here nicely demonstrates that. All pre-built reports in Google Analytics 4 are based on active users, which is different from Universal Analytics, where all the pre-built reports were based on total users. Within expirations in Google Analytics 4 and the BigQuery raw data export, we have flexibility, the ability to calculate both active users and total users. So be sure you're comparing like for like and know the difference between these two metrics. Thirdly, the BigQuery raw data export does not include all of the raw data. The BigQuery export provides user and event scope data, but at this point in time, does not provide session scoped data. Trying to engineer the export to provide session scope data requires significant workarounds and extensive coding, which could cause differences as part of this process. Finally, the Google Analytics 4 interface performs additional modeling on the raw data to try and fill measurement gaps. For example, if you have Google consent mode available, then there'll be additional modeling to model cookie list data within the interface as well. This modeling is not performed on the raw data in the BigQuery raw data export, and therefore can provide data differences 
when comparing query data in the BigQuery raw data export against the corresponding data in the Google Analytics 4 interface. So it is a myth that data is directly comparable across the Google Analytics 4 interface and the Google BigQuery raw data export. This is due to a combination of additional data modeling in the Google Analytics 4 interface, missing session scope data in the BigQuery raw data export, and the use of active users in the Google Analytics 4 pre-built reports. So there is a lot to consider and be aware of when comparing the underlying Google Analytics 4 data. And this seems like a perfect opportunity to summarize the myths and the facts that we've developed together. So firstly, it is a myth that the Google Analytics 4 interface reports with both high accuracy and high precision. We know that the Google Analytics 4 interface uses the Hyperlog Log++ algorithm to estimate cardinality to a high degree of accuracy. Secondly, it is a myth that the user's metric is comparable across Google Analytics 4 and user Universal Analytics. We know that active users, reporting identity, and data thresholding all mean that comparisons here are not on a like-for-like -like basis. Thirdly, it is a myth that the sessions metric is comparable across Google Analytics 4 and Universal Analytics. We know that steps have been put in place to reduce session inflation, preserve attribution, and better handle processing of late hits. Fourthly, it is a myth that conversion metrics are comparable across Google Analytics 4 and Universal Analytics. We know that the default counting mechanism has changed, some goals are no longer supported, and changes to attribution modeling and scoping means that the data is not directly comparable across these two data sets. And finally, it is a myth that querying the same data in the Google Analytics 4 interface and the Google BigQuery raw data export will return the same results. We know that there is additional modeling or processing that's done within the Google Analytics 4 interface. And currently, the BigQuery raw data export doesn't support session scoped data. So hopefully from this talk today, things are a little clearer. Remember those initial questions I raised right back at the start of the talk? If you are questioning whether Google Analytics 4 is tracking accurately and precisely, remember that in the interface, data is estimated using the hyperlog log algorithm. Accuracy is typically within 2%, with time and memory a lot more efficient. Comparison of data between Google Analytics 4 and Universal Analytics across users, sessions, and conversions is not like for like due to several important changes under the hood, which we have surfaced and explained in today's talk. And finally, it is possible to encounter conflicting data when comparing the Google Analytics 4 interface versus the BigQuery raw data export. The Google Analytics 4 interface performs additional modeling and processing to the raw data, which will contribute and lead to some differences. And that's it. Thank you very much for listening to my talk. I hope you found this talk both useful and insightful. For any further